Hello everyone, in this lecture, I'm going to show to you how to derive the mean, the variance, and the moment generating function for the normal distribution. Normal distribution is a continuous probability distribution with the following probability density function or PDF. Function of x given the parameters mu sigma squared is equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi sigma e raised to negative square of x minus mu over 2 sigma squared where x is defined from negative infinity to positive infinity, mu is also defined from negative infinity to positive infinity, and sigma is defined to be always greater than zero. Now let us derive the mean. Mean is equal to the expectation of x, and expectation of x is equal to the integral of x times the probability density function, dx, then using this one as our probability density function, we have this one from here. Then, for the limits, x is from negative infinity to positive infinity, so we have here negative infinity to positive infinity. Then, let us move the constant outside of the integral, so we have here the constant from here. Then, the rest of the terms in here. Now, let us transform this into a form that we can easily integrate. Let us use this transformation function, z equals to x minus mu over sigma, to transform this into in terms of z from in terms of x, but in a simpler form. Then x will be sigma z plus mu, which is this one. Then dx will be the derivative of this one, which is sigma dz. Then let us substitute this in here. We'll get this one from here. Then for x, let us use this one, sigma z plus mu in here. Then e raised to negative square of for x, let us use this again in place of x. So we have here sigma z plus mu, then minus mu over 2 sigma squared. Then for dx, let us use this one, so we have sigma dz. Then for the limits, if x is negative infinity, in here, negative infinity minus a constant till negative infinity, and negative infinity divided by a constant that is always greater than zero till negative infinity, so z is negative infinity, when x is negative infinity, so we can put here negative infinity. Then if x is positive infinity, we have here positive infinity minus a constant, still positive infinity, and positive infinity divided by a constant that is always greater than zero, still positive infinity. So we have here positive infinity for z when x is positive infinity. Then we can cancel out plus mu, minus mu, sigma, and sigma. Then, square of sigma z is sigma squared, z squared. Then we can cancel out sigma squared and sigma squared. So what we're left with is, so from here, 1 over square root of 2 pi, then sigma z plus mu, then here, e raised to negative z squared over 2. So we have here e raised to negative z squared over 2, to then this one dz. Then we can separate these terms, so we have for sigma z, we have here this sigma z and then plus, then for mu, we have here mu. Then we can move out the constants from the integral. So we have here sigma in here and mu in here. Then let us evaluate this one, which is this one. So to evaluate this one, let us see what's the derivative of e raised to negative z squared over 2 with respect to z. So let us differentiate first the exponent. We have negative 2z over 2. Then e raised to negative z squared over 2. Then we can cancel out 2 and 2. So what we're left with is negative z e raised to negative z squared over 2. Then if we compare this one to this one, they are almost the same, except that this is negative while this one is not. So the integral of this one is negative of the integral of this one, which is this one, e raised to negative z squared over 2. Then this is from negative infinity to positive infinity. So we have here negative infinity to positive infinity. Now if we substitute this positive infinity for z, we'll get here positive infinity squared is still positive infinity, and positive infinity divided by 2 is still positive infinity. So we have here e raised to negative infinity. Then e raised to negative infinity is equal to 1 over e raised to infinity, and it is equal to 1 over infinity because e raised to infinity is infinity. Then 1 over infinity is 0. So we have here negative 0 or 0 when we substitute this positive infinity for z, so we have here 0. Then minus 
if we substitute this negative infinity for z in here, negative infinity squared is positive infinity, and positive infinity divided by 2, still positive infinity, and then e raised to negative infinity is e raised to negative infinity, which is 0, then negative 0 is still 0, so we have here 0 when we substitute this negative infinity for z. Then 0 minus 0 is still 0, so the value of this one is 0. Then this one is 0, so this whole term will be 0. Then our mean will be just this term. Then we have here, mean is equal to this term. Then to evaluate this one, this integral is similar to a Gaussian integral, which is this one in terms of y variable. Now, the value of this integral is e squared to pi. The process of evaluating this integral is a little bit tedious and very long, so I didn't include that in this video. But if you want the complete details on how this integral is evaluated and become e squared to pi, uh, I have a video that shows that evaluation and I provided the link in the description below so you can check it out. Then, in order to use this one and utilize this value of the integral, let us make this one similar to this one. Let us make this z squared over 2 to be same with this y squared. So we need this z squared over 2 equal to y squared and we can do that by squaring both terms. So we have here, square of this one is y and square of this one is z over square of 2. So let us make this one as our transformation function. Then z will become square root of 2 times y, which is this one. Then dz will be the derivative of this one, which is square root of 2 dy. Then let us substitute this in here. So what we'll get? So we'll get mean is equal to this one is in here. Then e raised to negative. So for z squared over 2, the square of this one is z squared over 2. So we can replace it with square of this one, which is y squared. So we have here e raised to negative y squared. Then for dz, let us use this one. So we have here square root of 2 dy. Then for the limits, if z is negative infinity, so we have here negative infinity divided by this one is still negative infinity. So y is negative infinity. Then if z is positive infinity, we have here positive infinity divided by the square root of 2 is still positive infinity. So we have here positive infinity. Then we can cancel out the 2 inside the square root. And this is square root of 2. Then what will remain are mu over square root of pi. Then e raised to negative y squared. Then dy. Then this one is the same with this one. So the value of this one is square root of pi. Then we have here square root of pi for this one. Then we can cancel out this square root of pi and square root of pi. Then what we're left with is mu. Now this is our mean which is equal to mu. Now let us proceed with our derivation of variance. Variance has the formula expectation of square of x minus expectation of x. And expectation of x, it is equal to the mean so we have derived it to be mu. So we have here mu for this one. Then this one is the integral of x minus for expectation of x, we have mu, then squared, then our probability density function, then dx. Then using this one as our probability density function, we have this one from here. Then for the limits, x is from negative infinity to positive infinity, so we have here negative infinity to positive infinity. Then we can move out this constant from integral, so we have here this one from here. Then the rest of the term, this one and this will be this one. Then let us simplify this integral using this transformation function z is equal to x minus mu over sigma to transform this from in terms of x into in terms of z with similar form that we can easily integrate. Then from here, x will be sigma times z plus mu. So we have here x equals to sigma z plus mu. Then dx will be the derivative of this one, which is sigma times dz. Then let us substitute this in here. So we'll get 1 over square root of 2 pi sigma from here, then integral of, then for x, let us use this one, sigma z plus mu, then minus mu squared, then e raised to negative square of for x, let us use this one, sigma z plus mu, then minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared. Then for dx, let us use this one, 
So we have here sigma dz. Then we can cancel out plus mu and minus mu, then plus mu, then minus mu, then sigma, then sigma. Then square of sigma z is sigma squared, z squared. Then we can cancel out sigma squared and sigma squared. So what we're left with is 1 over square root of 2 pi in here. Then in here, square of sigma z is sigma squared z squared. Then in here, it is negative z squared over 2, which is this one, then dz in here. Now for the limits, if x is negative infinity, negative infinity minus a constant, still negative infinity, and negative infinity divided by a constant, that is always greater than 0, still negative infinity, so we have here negative infinity, and if x is positive infinity, positive infinity minus a constant, is still positive infinity, and positive infinity divided by a constant, that is always greater than 0, still positive infinity, so we have here positive infinity. Then we can move out this constant outside of the integral. So we have here sigma squared from here. Then for this integral, let us use integration by parts, which has this formula, integral of u dv is equal to uv minus integral of v du. Then for the u, let us take z from here. Then dv will be the rest of the term, which is z e raised to negative z squared over 2 dz. Then du will be the derivative of this one, which is dz. Then for v, the integral of this one. So taking note that the derivative of e raised to negative z squared over 2 with respect to z is negative z e raised to negative z squared over 2. And if we compare this one to this one, it is negative of this one. So the integral of this one is negative of the integral of this one, which is e raised to negative z squared over 2, which is this one. Then, integral of u dv, which is this one, in here, is equal to uv, u is z, in here, and v is this one, so we have here negative e raised to negative z squared over 2. Then we have here negative infinity to positive infinity, so we have here negative infinity to positive infinity. Then minus integral of v du, v is this one. So we have here negative e raised to negative z squared over 2. Then du is dz, so we have here dz. Then we can cancel out minus and negative. So we'll have this one plus this one. Now let us substitute this positive infinity for z. We'll get here e raised to negative. Positive infinity squared is positive infinity. And positive infinity over 2 is still positive infinity. And e raised to negative infinity is 0. So we have here 0 times negative of positive infinity, which can be 0 or infinity. To know the real value, we need to use this L Hospital's rule. And in L Hospital's rule, limit of f of x divided by g of x as x approaches a is equal to the limit of the derivative of f of x divided by the derivative of g of x as x approaches a. Then to apply this rule, let us rewrite this one into this one as x approaches positive infinity. Then the derivative of negative z is negative 1. Then the derivative of this one is, for the derivative of the exponent, we have 2z over 2. Then e raised to z squared over 2. Then we can cancel out 2 and 2. So we have this one, z e raised to z squared over 2. Now if we substitute this positive infinity for z, this one, this one will be positive infinity squared over 2, still positive infinity and e raised to a positive infinity is positive infinity and positive infinity times z, which is positive infinity, we have here, take the limit z. Then we have here positive infinity. So negative 1 over positive infinity is still 0. So it is 0 when we substitute this positive infinity for z. Then how about if we substitute this negative infinity for z? So, negative infinity squared, still positive infinity, and positive infinity divided by 2 is still positive infinity. So, we have here e raised to negative infinity, which is 0. 
then for this one we have here negative of negative infinity times zero is either zero or infinity saying when we substitute this positive infinity for z then applying this Hospital's rule this is z this is z and this is z so similar to this above we just change this one from positive infinity to negative infinity and if we substitute this negative infinity to z we'll have here negative infinity squared is positive infinity and positive infinity divided by 2 is still positive infinity so we have here e raised to positive infinity is still positive infinity and negative infinity times positive infinity is negative infinity the negative 1 over negative infinity is 0 so we have this 0 when we substitute this negative infinity for z then 0 minus 0 is 0 then what we're left with is this one now for this one it is similar to a Gaussian integral which we have evaluated in our derivation of mean let me show you now this one integral of e raised to negative z squared over 2 dz is this one if we do the transformation then this one including dy is square root of pi so we have this whole thing is square root of pi times this square root of 2 which is equal to square root of 2 pi so this one is square root of 2 pi which is this one then let us bring back this one in our formula for variance so we have this one for our variance which we can rewrite again in here so this one is square root of 2 pi which is this one then we can cancel out square root of 2 pi and square root of 2 pi so what we're left with is sigma squared which is our variance now let us proceed with our derivation of the moment generating function for this normal distribution moment generating function has a formula expectation of e raised to tx and expectation of e raised to tx is equal to e raised to tx times the probability density function dx then let us use this one for our probability density function then this one is from here this is from negative infinity to positive infinity so we have here negative infinity to positive infinity then let us combine both exponentials so we have here e raised to negative for this one x minus minus squared over 2 sigma squared then plus tx from here then let me get this term to be in here then let us combine both terms using the common denominator 2 sigma squared by multiplying it to the numerator and denominator of the x so we have here negative square of x minus mu plus 2 sigma squared times tx so we have here 2 sigma squared times tx then over the common denominator 2 sigma squared then let us expand this one so we have here negative x squared minus 2 times mu x which is this one then plus mu squared then plus 2 sigma squared tx then let us combine this one and this one so we get here negative 2 mu plus sigma squared t then x which is common to both terms then then let me get this term and evaluate it in here then let me complete this squares for these two terms then we will have x squared minus this one in here then plus square of this one mu plus sigma squared t which is this one then if we add this term we need to reduce it also by this term to not change the value of this expression then the remaining is plus mu squared which is this one then these three terms now is a complete square so we can rewrite it as square of x minus mu plus sigma squared t then we can expand this so we have here minus mu squared plus 2 times mu times sigma squared t which is this one then square of this one sigma squared t which is sigma raised to 4 t squared then the remaining term is plus mu squared then let us distribute this negative for its term in here so we have here negative mu squared minus this one then minus this one then we can cancel out minus mu squared and plus mu squared so we're left with this one 
Now, let us bring back this one in here. So, this one will be negative of this one, which is this one, divided by 2 sigma squared. Now, let us distribute this negative over 2 sigma squared for each term in here. So, we have here negative of this one over 2 sigma squared. Then, negative of minus is plus this one in here over 2 sigma squared. Then, negative of minus is plus this one in here over 2 sigma squared. Then, we can cancel out 2 and 2 and sigma squared and sigma squared. Then, this 4 can be reduced to 2 by canceling sigma squared in here. Then, what we're left with is this from here. Now, let us bring back this one, which is equal to this one in, in here. But this one is quite complex if we bring it back in here. So let us assign this, this one to be delta mu plus sigma squared t and this one as eta, which is mu t plus one half sigma squared t squared. They are all constants. Then this one will become negative x minus this one is delta then over 2 sigma squared then plus this one is eta then let us bring back this one in here so we'll get our moment generating function is equal to this one so this one is this one now this is plus eta and we can rewrite this one as e raised to negative this one times e raised to eta which is this one then this is a constant e raised to eta and we can move it out from the integral so we have here e raised to eta and then the rest of the term which is this one then if we compare this one this expression to our probability density function which is this one they are almost the same except that this is delta well, this one is mu, which are constants. So, this one is a probability density function, which is this one for normal distribution, but this mu is delta. So, this is a probability density function. which is a normal distribution. Then we know that the integral of the PDF dx from negative infinity to positive infinity which where this x is defined is equal to 1. This is one of the properties of a probability distribution. Now if this is unclear to you or you don't know about this property, I have a video that proves that the integral of the PDF of the normal distribution from negative infinity to positive infinity is equal to 1. So I have provided the link in the description below so you can check it out. So this whole integral is 1. So what we're left with is e raised to eta and eta is this one. So we can bring it back. So we get here our moment generating function is e raised to mu t plus 1 half sigma squared t squared which is this one.